Welcome back to Billy Mac Makes. Today we're going to be making a designer coffee table. My wife found this uh, online, uh, but when I saw the price that it was almost 1700 American dollars, which converts to about a million Canadian, I thought, I think I'm going to give it a try making this. Now it's a round coffee table. And so what I did is I cut out some circles. Now they're not the exact same size. You saw me putting a rabbit into the bottom circle. And now this top one will fit perfectly on that inside um, diameter of that bottom circle. Then what I have to do is cut some supports to join them. Now this top one didn't need to be a complete circle. So to remove some of the weight, I thought I would just make a bit of a ring. Now I'm cutting those supports. For whatever reason, I decided to go with five of these supports. And you can see the little pencil lines there that they're going to have a little rebate. But now I had to space these things evenly around my circle. So what I did is I divided the circle into four and then I found the radius. Then I marked half of that radius. Then if you measure down from the top of that point, you get that length then you transfer that length across that center line and make a mark and then you measure down from there that is the length of the cord and you just simply put that length in this case 17 inches all the way around the circumference of the circle and it will give you five equally spaced points easy right so then I simply marked off the location of where each of these little uprights was going to go and then I pre-drilled in the center. And then it was just a matter of screwing and gluing, or gluing and screwing these uprights into place. I did have a little 90 degree support piece on there on the side, you can see. And so when I clamped it into place, I knew that I was going to be uh, securing it um, at a right angle to the surface. And I just repeated that four more times until I had all five in. And then you can see that that upper circle, that little ring fit perfectly inside those uprights. And I simply secured the ring to the top part of the uprights and there you go. Now I had to build the outside. So now I'm cutting into my oak veneer plywood. This was uh, considerably more expensive than the plywood used for the frame. So I really wanted to be careful with this. So use the track saw to cut a nice long length. This is eight feet long. Now I wanted to put a rabbit into the edge of this outside piece of plywood that's going to wrap around this table. And I thought it might be easiest to cut it before I put all the kerf cuts in the bottom. So there you see with a couple of cuts, I was able to remove that piece. Now this is the top of the table and you can see that that top ring is going to sit perfectly flush with the outside uh, of that rabbit. Now there's a rabbit on the bottom and it's going to sit on top of that bottom ring. Now I'm adding the curse. Uh, kerf cutting allows you to bend a piece of plywood. Uh, obviously you don't want to cut all the way through the plywood but you have to find a very delicate balance between cutting deep enough to allow the curve to happen and going too, too deep that you make it weak. So my curve wasn't really happening, so I thought I would add some more, but that still wasn't allowing it to take the curve. And then you can see the adjustment I made, and that was to make a slightly deeper curve. So every other curve there you can see was deeper and then it allowed it to take the curve nicely there you know you can still sort of see a few uh, ribs on the outside uh, some flat spots in between those curves but if anything I think it gives some beautiful character so I did a little dry fit here uh, it was too long this was an eight foot sheet of plywood and so I did uh, measure or make the diameter such that it wouldn't go beyond the eight feet uh, but I knew I would have a seam here, and so what I did is I left it a little bit short so I could fill it with a piece of hardwood that I had glued up and the grain would generally um, match it. So here I am doing the glue up, and this was an exciting uh, 
point in the project, so I'm kind of rolling it down to get it started. I had it loosely clamped on there to get it started, and now I'm allowing or adding in the clamps. And I'm going to also tack it in uh, with a brad nailer, just trying to make sure that it's perfectly flush on the top, and I'm okay with it being um, just a little bit past on the bottom. That's fine because I am going to be adding um, another ring on the bottom that is going to act as the base and it's going to be set back uh, about an inch, almost like a toe kick. So here you can see from another angle as I am curling it up, that glue is going to do a great job holding it on and I'm adding in uh, nails every couple inches just to, again, help hold it in place so it won't um, spring off. I am also, you'll see in a second, going to add some straps around the outside, almost like a um, strap clamp for a picture frame. And I took off the corner pieces, so it was just the strap. And it did a really nice job of putting some pressure around the top and the bottom to hold it tight while that glue dried. The last thing I wanted was for it to spring open and did not. So um, a lot of pressure there. I added a little piece of foam to protect where that plastic was really going to be pushing on it. Now here's that solid strip of wood. Um, this, this went in nicely. Two parallel surfaces. Um, I made it a little bit proud and then I was able to use a hand plane and carefully bring that down making sure I didn't go through the veneer. Now for the top, I traced it out to make sure it was perfect and then I cut just outside my line, put it on top and then I used a flush cut trim bit to bring it down to the exact size. Then measured out some iron on veneer and I just heated it up with the iron, got the glue nice and sticky and was able to attach this to the outside. Now I am putting a little rebate on the underside of this top because what I'm going to do is allow that to sit on top of those supports and just inside and it just snugs in there like a glove. And then on to the fun part, a little bit of stain and some finish and we're done. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you'll consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Uh, I'm new to YouTube and I'm trying to grow the channel so any support you can throw me would be wonderful.